your energy forecast for Tuesday, May 14th. Okay, so we have the moon in Leo energy all day, and this is going to bode very well for us to try to get us in alignment with our heart space, with our soul space, with our new authentic vibration and frequency and all the new wants, needs, and desires that come along with it. The moon in Leo is definitely helping us to build in our courage and our bravery in order for us to align with that heart space and actually take action and make moves to initiate on our new passions, on our new desires, on our new goals. Now, this is the last day that Mercury is going to be in Aries energy. We just had Mercury clear his post retrograde shadow period here yesterday on the 13th. We went kind of direct, I'm going to say clarity at this 27th degree that we went retrograde at. And so this is new foreign territory for us today, but there's going to be some pressure on the mental plane because, of course, nearing the final degrees of any sign of any transit, there is pressure. There's pressure for us to get a grip, to reflect back, to realize what it is that we had to learn, what it is that we had to explore, while Mercury not only was in Aries energy, but retrograded through that Aries energy, side note, through eclipse season as well. So this is like the full completion point of this particular transit. And we are going to have some triggers and activations here to really kind of get our mind focused on what needs to be done. Because of course, when Mercury moves into Taurus energy, the tunnel vision goggles go on and we get hyper-focused on our to-do list on how we're going to come up with a, a plan and a strategy to actually move forward. So take a listen to the Astro forecast that I put out for Mercury moving into Taurus energy. And of course, if you've downloaded your Taurus season e-guide, you're going to want to flip to this particular point in the workbook and really capture what is on your mind, the conversations that need to be had, the topics and themes that are consuming your mental energy in order for us to be able to look back on this point in time in a couple of weeks and understand what it is that we've actually initiated, what it is that we've actually built, brought to life and created. So there are eight different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. So the moon in this Leo energy is going to make a very positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Taurus energy. So this is turning the volume all the way up on our optimism, on our confidence. We're getting a little bit of a self-esteem boost. We are building again in our boldness and our bravery and our courage needed in order to stand up for ourselves and really kind of, I'm going to say, dance to the beat of our own drum and realize our individual mission, purpose, quest, what it is that our heart space is asking us to pursue. Now, Jupiter is offering us a beautiful opportunity to kind of expand, if you will, on these new realizations where passions, desires, wants, needs, new values are concerned. And because we are nearing the end of Jupiter in Taurus's transit, we are definitely starting to see, especially reflecting back to May of 2023, where it is that we actually have grown. We have healed. We have made some major changes. We have re redesigned, restructured our physical realm to start kind of mirroring back the changes that we know that we want to see in our inner realm. And so this is like a boost of energy, a boost of confidence. This is like reassuring to us that we are on the precipice of a major change, taking control of our lives, leading us into a more prosperous, more abundant time of life because we're allowing our heart space to lead. The moon is then going to trine beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in his rulership in Aries energy, a fire sign. The Leo energy that the moon is in is a fire sign. This is what gives us our trine. Fire energy is great for, first of all, helping us to burn through the cords, through the attachments to the past, to the old, to the egoic programming that creeps in and prevents us from actually moving on. That fire energy then goes ahead and regenerates itself, creates a new spark, new fire, new flame within us for us to pursue. And so the moon and Mars coming together is an emotional, let's call it motivation, 
an emotional inspiration, emotional determination to get our ass in gear, to figure things out because we have the ants in our pants really pushing us to take action and make moves to initiate this new chapter, this new path that we have been thinking a lot about, just haven't had the opportunity to take action and make any moves to actually bring it to life. This is us, again, building in our warrior spirit and our mood and our attitude and getting heart aligned, really understanding new passions, new desires that are definitely being triggered and activated in us to be bold enough to break away from what once was and now start initiating a path, a plan, a strategy towards what could be. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. It rules over roles and responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. He's in Pisces energy, again, bringing a closure to a 30-year cycle, also helping us to deconstruct the old version of self, the old vision, goals, and dreams, the old belief system. This is a positive interaction, which means that we are feeling confident in what it is that we have to do to boss up, to start building towards something better. Again, the structure, the foundation that is needed is essentially starting within us. We've had a change of heart. Now we're building in the intensity that we need with boldness, with bravery, with courage in order to actually boss up and make the change. This is a realization that again, we're not looking back. Instead, we're aligning with this new frequency in our heart space that the new version of self has brought forth. And we are finally getting serious about the initial plans that need to be brought to life in order for us to start building towards this new goal, this vision, this dream. The moon then goes ahead and makes an awkward interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is a little bit of a check in with our intuition, but we're struggling with really understanding what our higher self wants from us, what our mission is, what our purpose is. There's a little bit of confusion here. There's a little bit of delusion here as well. And so this can be a state where we do become a little bit more emotionally overwhelmed than anything else. And that tendency has us kind of retreating, kind of moving within ourselves to figure out where it is that the energies are conflicting, if you will. Uh, one of the things that I just want to remind you is that the Leo energy is very connected to the ego avatar. We are here to channel our authentic vibration and frequency our authentic heart and soul space through the physical form that this ego avatar has provided us with. And so the wants, needs, and desires that we are realizing that we have in this physical realm, in this physical body, in this earth plane, I'm going to say are a little bit different than the wants, the needs, the desires that the higher self, that the soul self wants us to actually pursue. And not that they're that far off of the map of each other, but there is a let's call it disagreement between the ego self and the higher self. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that our higher self is wanting us to pursue something that doesn't make sense to us when the Leo energy has us kind of aligning with a passion, with a desire, with a path, with a plan, with a strategy that makes a lot more sense in this physical realm with the circumstances going on, with the information available to us. And so the interaction with Neptune can get very confusing because our intuition and our higher self isn't exactly on the same page as our understanding in this physical form, in this ego avatar that our heart wants us to pursue. So a little bit of confusion there. Now, this isn't a bad thing because it just puts us in a different, let's call it emotional and mental perspective to explore different thoughts and ideas and wants, needs and desires. And shortly thereafter, the moon in Leo is going to go ahead and trine beautiful interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. So again, fire on fire action. And what's even more positive is whatever like disconnect or detachment or awareness that comes at us due to the moon and Neptune interacting, we're going to be able to make a choice point because that North Node in Aries is trying to get us on the right path to our soul's mission, our soul's purpose. And there's an epiphany here. Emotionally speaking, we're harmonizing within ourselves between our intuition and our heart space on a step that we could possibly make moving forward. 
So there is a certain amount of growth. There isn't a certain amount of reassurance, if you will. There's a certain amount of certainty that we have, even if it's a baby step on where it is that we could actually move forward. That takes place at around 11.30 a.m., 5.07 p.m. We have our next aspect. So that's a huge chunk of time that we're kind of sitting in this, let's call it mind space and heart space of thinking about the options and opportunities that we want to pursue. At 5.07 p.m., we're going to take a turn for the not so nice thoughts and feelings because the moon is going to interact with Saturn again, but this is going to be in a tough interaction. So this is a reality check. So something tells me that what it is that we decided upon, whether it is our heart or head or higher self kind of leading the charge earlier on in the day, we start questioning things later on in the day. We get some sort of reality check, some sort of aha moment. We may just, you know, run into a negative mood, a negative attitude, if you will, where we're not feeling bold and brave and courageous enough to do what we have to do to start building towards something new. Either way, there's a huge drop in the optimism, in the confidence that we were trying to build in earlier on in the day. We aren't as sure as we were earlier in the day. And that in itself is very defeating. It's very confusing. It's very disappointing. We further that tension when the moon gets into the boxing ring and fights it out with Venus. So Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in her rulership and Taurus energy, very logical and practical when it comes to her happiness, her joy, her pleasure, her safety, her security, her stability. So this is going to be a tension and a conflict that is going to illuminate where it is that we're not feeling ready to make the moves that we have to make. Again, there's a drop off of confidence. There's a drop off of optimism. There's a drop off of the overall courage and bravery that we were building in. Again, if you've been kind of following along Venus in this Taurus energy, she is very low, very slow, very steady in realizing very matter of factly who and what needs to stay and needs to go. Now, a couple days ago, we felt like we were ready to take action and make moves to create time, energy, space and distance in certain relationship dynamics that were not supporting us and not encouraging us. That kind of fell off, if you will. And now, because our heart space is involved, Leo energy, now we're really questioning whether or not we are confident that that's the choice, that is the decision, that that's what needs to be done. So there's a new awareness, if you will, of the wants, needs, and desires that we were trying to build in, where it is that we're not feeling so confident about them anymore. And again, when the Leo energy is negatively aspected, we tend to be the cowardly little kitten instead of the proud, courageous lion. And so this is an example of that because again, Venus, she knows that she's going to have to do some hard things in order to make some dramatic changes in her physical realm, especially uh, where relationship dynamics are concerned. And right now we're just not feeling bold and brave and courageous enough to do any of that. So the last aspect that we have going on here is between Mercury and Neptune, which I think is a very interesting dynamic considering the fact that, again, this is Mercury's last aspect with any kind of planet before shifting into Taurus energy. So we're at the final degrees of Aries energy. It is a critical crisis degree. There is some pressure mounting in our mental plane there's some confusion there's some aggression because again spit fire that Aries energy is but Mercury making this positive interaction with Neptune who of course is in his place of power in this Pisces energy is giving us a little bit more clarity and detail on what the vision the goal actually is especially coming from our higher self so the higher self energy is coming in from Neptune the lower level intellect is ruled over by Mercury and so this is a little bit of a refresher, if you will, a reminder of what that end goal and vision actually is so that we can reframe our current circumstances and situation and actually start kind of, I'm going to say, communicating or talking, speaking upon it or taking action, taking the initiative to make the smaller little changes in the present moment in the here and now that eventually are going to align with the greater grander plan. There's definitely some intuitive insight that's going to kick in. We are going to have some aha moments, some epiphanies. They are going to be very aggressive thoughts on what needs to be done 
in this present moment in order to set our futuristic selves up for success.